So hey everyone, welcome back to the Airstream. My name is Rich Charpentier if you're new to the channel, and thanks for stopping by. This video is going to be part of a longer series. I'm, I'm just going to call it my story. Um, I decided to do it this morning because I've got a conference call at 12 o'clock today that can run up to two hours. It's actually, it's a conference call with a, um, a medical provider out of Scottsdale, Arizona. And I never, I never thought I would do this video, but I think it's necessary. So if you follow along here, you know I've got some autoimmune disorders and some problems. Um, they've, they've affected my life since 2005, uh, and it hasn't been fun all the time. Um, it's part of the reason why I'm in the Airstream. So let's just get right to it. Um, I have Hashimoto's. I've got severe allergies. At one point, I was diagnosed with having an eosinophilic disorder. It's this thing with your white cells. Bottom line, my, my body hasn't been happy with, um, with stuff for quite a while. And the entire time uh, since 2005 and all this started, I've always had something in the back of my mind that I believe really pushes the issue. And so in this series, I'm going to talk about that. And what I've had in the back of my mind that pushes this issue is long-term Lyme disease. Um, when I was a kid, I lived in New England. I grew up on a beautiful lake, and I spent a lot of time with my family on that lake. I played outside. I rolled around in the grass. Um, I dove into poison ivy bushes because I didn't know they were poison ivy and woke up the next day with my whole face swollen up and itchy. You know, things kids do in the 70s. Um, during that time, uh, when I was actually, you know, right at the start of the 80s, I was nine years old, uh, 1981, and um, I was at the lake, and my cousins were making fun of me. They were teasing me. They were all older. I was the youngest of the cousins. And um, my uh, cousins teased me because on my back, I had a giant bullseye. Uh, we're talking perfect lifesaver bullseye. The, uh, the telltale Lyme disease uh, flag. And in 1981, people didn't know about Lyme disease. So I got really sick for a couple of weeks in August of 1981, hanging out on the lake. Um, we never brought me to a physician uh, at that time. And I finally got through it. So it was like a really weird, horrible summer cold. And... Um, since then, though, Sutton, Massachusetts and Manchog Pond have become known as a Lyme hotspot in New England. My entire family over the past decade has been treated time and time again. So when you get bit by a Lyme tick, um, it stays in your blood for months. If it's not treated with antibiotics to kill it at that point, it can actually bury itself deeper into you. And um, I, I personally believe that that is what has happened to me. And the really fun thing is the medical community, half of it doesn't believe in long-term Lyme. The other half does, but treatment is kind of out the window. When you go to a physician and you say, I have a suspicion that I got Lyme when I was a kid, they do the basic blood test. And that blood test is not relevant and can often give false negatives. And I've had a lot of doctors tell me that. So why has why this come to mind? Why am I thinking about this today? Um, yesterday, Jody was talking to her father for Father's Day, and he's sick as a dog right now. He's been having a really bad time, and he was just diagnosed with Lyme, so he was recently bitten. Um, so he's been doing some heavy antibiotics, and he was telling her about all of his symptoms and all the problems and the fact that he'd be freezing one moment and hot the next moment. I just went through that a couple weeks ago. Again, that seems to be a springtime ritual with me getting sick as a dog for up to a month. I've often thought that it's uh, it's pushed by allergies and the fact that I've got some pretty severe allergies. But I, I think there's something more because Lyme does work in cycles um, where it will aggressively grow at some points in time and it affects a lot of stuff. That is if you believe in long-term Lyme, of course. So after Jody talked to her dad, I just decided, you know, I've been looking into this for years. I don't hang my hat on it, and I don't sit around inside all day long saying, well, I'm not doing anything because I think I might have this. I'm, I'm still active, and anybody who watches this knows this. Um, 
but I've had a bad couple of weeks, and I'd like some more explanations other than um, prednisone, Cipro, and things seem to be a little calmer, and hey, your eye's working okay again, but still not quite there. I need some more answers, so I'm doing this, I'm going to do this video series to take you along with me to get the damn answers. Um, this has been demoralizing over the years, so it's hard to pursue it. But given, um, just given that uh, extra kick in my ass this weekend, hearing about all of Jody's dad's symptoms and knowing that my whole family has been treated time and again, my nephews, my nieces, my sisters, my dad, my stepmother, everybody on that lake has been treated over and over again for Lyme. Um, you know, right after the bite. But, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of features of long-term Lyme that several of my family members exhibit, too. So, after hearing Jody's dad's story, I got on the internet yesterday, and so, sorry for me looking all around. <laughs> this is a weird story for me. But I just went on and I googled long-term Lyme treatment, because I've never found anything great. Yesterday, I found something. There's actually a clinic down in Scottsdale, Arizona, near my dentist office. Awesome. And so I dropped them a note. I read through their website. Um, I didn't read through all of it because I want to talk to somebody. And so yesterday was Sunday. I got a phone call yesterday afternoon from these people. So today I'm scheduled to speak with one of their physicians. Um, they're going to have a battery of questions for me. And... I'm going to let you know how that goes in the next episode. So, for the Airstream fanatics, for the RV fanatics, um, this series might not be of interest to you, and I totally understand. But a big part of why I'm here in the Airstream now, why I'm in Prescott, Arizona, why my life changed so much over a decade, has to do with this ongoing chronic illness garbage. And I'm not one of those guys who wants to be sick. I want to be out mountain biking. I, I want to be out rock climbing again. I want to feel good enough to do that. And I, you know, over the past couple of years, I do still climb. Um, right now, you couldn't pay me to climb. I'm so dizzy. So I'm going to start getting some answers. I'm going to share this with you. I'm going to share this journey with you investigating this. It might turn out that they can't help me at all. And it is just the Hashimoto's and it's just the allergies. But like I said, I had that big bullseye on my back never treated and now where i lived is one of the hot spots in new england for lyme disease and for studies on lyme disease because recently at manchok pond there was a researcher who was looking into the fact that songbirds are carrying lyme infected ticks from new england as far down as virginia now so lyme has grown in its footprint so, um, so we'll talk about all of that. And if this stuff's boring to you guys, I don't mind you skipping over it at all. Um, but this is part of my Airstream life. This is part of why I'm in the Airstream. And hopefully I can get some more answers so that the Airstream can be more of a choice than something that I have to do to manage my environment. All right, guys, I hope that's not a downer. It shouldn't be. I'm on the road for some answers. And I'm going to bring you on this road. And we're going to navigate the super strange medical community of 2018. The super strange medical community that's been going on for over a decade in my experience. All right. Oh, and that's not to say anything political or anything. I'm keeping all of that out of it. I'm just going to take, uh, take you on this trip. Thanks for tuning in. And... Um, I'll see you guys in the next video.